All right, so this is where I started. Check it out. Freaking broken bridge. That's my first abandoned thing. So we're gonna cross now. All right, so this is an abandoned restaurant closed for five years. So we have no idea of how to get in. It belongs to somebody, obviously. Um, I couldn't message anybody because I can't really speak Cambodian that much. So that's how we're gonna start it out first. Top of the morning. I guess I had like a little garden in between everything else, all the buildings first. Wait, this looks sick. Ah, this is beautiful. Look at like the- All right, what's up guys? Just one with Danny in the house. And today I'm at my homeland. I'm doing my first abandoned building since I've been here. This place is really cool. This place closed in 2012 um, due to somebody selling it and the person who bought it hasn't done anything with it yet. So what's gonna happen is there's a display of fish tanks, there's other stuff where things are just left behind. It's cool how the structures are also like different from America. The structures here are actually hand built. You know, even though in America they're hand built, but they use like actual construction vehicles and stuff. But over here, it's more like hand built, more structural. There's more architecture. Other than that, I'm not sure what to expect. Maybe I'll find abandoned. I don't know something. But hey, thanks guys. Thanks for tagging along on this adventure, and I'm gonna show you guys around. Man, check out the structure here. It's sick. Them. I'm gonna try to see if I can get in there, but look inside of it. You can kind of see just a bunch of things in there. Random tables and stuff. I'm gonna find a way in. Look at that. I'm sorry you have to hear John's opening. Jesus Christ. Take a look at this. I'm walking around a little mini bridge. Some fish is actually in there. The structure of this place is actually really cool. As you can see, you can see all the columns and stuff still here. All of the architecture is totally different from what it used to be. This place is awesome, and they still have everything like hand built. All right, so here's where they used to have a display of fish. Back in the old, they used to display the fish for the higher middle class, then they'd pick their fishies and eat them. Pretty cool stuff, actually. Find an old abandoned stage. In 2012, and then after that, it closed. This is my guide right here. He's telling me, he's telling me what I should do. But so he's showing me how to walk on this thing because you could bust your ass because the structure is so old. Man, they still kept the lighting and everything here. But what he's gonna do is showing me uh, a. He's smart because he actually. He reminds me of an urban explorer by himself. Oh, Montalé. Mekong. Woo! So now here you can see the Mekong. <laughs> yeah. There's not much to the history. I don't really know why they closed. All I know is that there's a new restaurant. There's two of them. So there's one close to here and there's one like far down, yon down yonder. So other than that, I'm just raw exploration. I don't know what to expect actually. Found some abandoned ducks. Actually there's rice on the ground, meaning somebody's probably watching this place or it belongs to somebody, but they're staying here for now. I'm not gonna walk over there because the structure is so damaged, but this is a, it's like another altar to put your incense to respect your elders over here. You know what this structure kind of reminds me of? It reminds me of like a airplane hangar almost. You see how like the metal is all the protecting from the hun uh, from the sun? I was about to say from the hun. But anyways, yeah, the structure of this place is just awesome. You can just see everything around you and it's pretty cool. It's another bridge, but obviously I don't think there's any fish swimming through there. Actually there is, believe it or not, this life is still in there, but that's some dirty, dirty water. It's a pretty cool bridge. And that, that tree just growing in the middle is gigantic. Jesus. Want to eat your food out in the sun, they have these little huts. They're actually still pretty intact, which I'm surprised. And we happen to be right next to these condos. So you guys know those kids rides that I used to ride as a kid that just go up and down like they have hydraulics? I think I found a few of them. Let me show you really quick. So they left it behind these little uh, hydraulic quarter toy things for kids to go on. It's pretty cool actually. So I was trying to figure out what these rooms were. These rooms are actually karaoke bar rooms. 
I'm gonna show you, they still have some books to left behind. It's pretty cool stuff. So what you'd do is you'd, uh, if you wanted, there'd be a bunch of couches here. So there'd be a couch probably there, couch probably here. You get, you can get a girl or whoever to sit next to you. Mostly girls, if you're a girl, then sucks, sucks, but you don't get a guy. Other than that, and then you start singing. These are like old school style. Nowadays, this is totally different. Ben and Rooster. Here's a random fact. Not a lot of Cambodians like to drink Hennessy. Back at home, back in the US, yeah, they drink a lot of Hennessy. But down here, what they have is Johnny Walker and stuff in Chihuahua. A lot less expensive whiskey. And now Hennessy, obviously, for the VSOP is like a hundred and something bucks. I know that because, you know, I'm Cambodian, what do you expect? Now, if you look through the stage, you can see, if you fall through, you are falling down feet by feet. I don't care how freaking strong you are, you're probably dead. I'm surprised they even kept it like this. Imagine somebody had an accident and fell through. God, look at all the random beer bottles. Probably somebody's collection. I don't know if they're worth anything here, like they are down where I live, like 10 cents, 20 cents. Another thing I do like about the Cambodians and the, oh, the architecture and the structure, you see how those like trees integrated within the buildings? You would never have that in America. Just like a little courtyard you probably have. And these trees are gigantic. Totally different from back home. You know, I'm a crazy mother. Kind of scared the structure's gonna fall on me. But it actually isn't. Is that a room? And if you go in here, there's actually a room. Ugh, nasty. Now this is what I'm talking about. Up here they have old CDs, spray paint, speakers, all other old abandoned stuff. It's all like karaoke things because, you know, this place was a karaoke bar also. Other than that, oh man, old, old stuff. Record player. Ooh, this room's hot. I gotta get out of here. Yeah, I actually need the flashlight. It's a pretty big storage room. Yeah, it is. I got a grease gun in here that I see so far. Grease gun. <laughs> Old abandoned clothes. What's these? What's what? I don't know. I don't understand what they're saying. Uh, probably cooking oil. Cooking oil? That's kind of what it looks like. Man. Oh, checkbooks and receipts. Receipt books. Sticky notes. Yeah. Huh. Oh, tons of sticky notes. Got a map of Cambodia in here. Oh, snap. Old bin and plates and pots. Wow. We finally got in. We finally got in the lounge thing, Floyd. Look at this. Yeah, the whole map thing. Dude, take a look. Tons and tons of plates. And here, there's actually a Listerine bottle. Listerine's hard to find over here. It's really weird that they had one. It's like a... It's like a... It's like a... I know. It's like an old office room. So this is where all the, the paperwork and magic went down. Yeah, when they had to make extra... This is where we would be dan uh, abandoned. Hell yeah, counting money like bosses. Yep, being bosses. <laughs> <laughs> this place has only been abandoned for like five years. I'm surprised it's so destroyed. Could be worse though, to be honest with you. Not as much asbestos as I thought. Just a little bit. Alright ladies and gents, I'm back in the city of Phnom Penh for a final mission. The final mission that will make you guys all happy. So, Operation Save the Duck. Okay? Operation Save the Duck was all started because Joshua one with Josh, did not save that duck that he saw abandoned in the place. I was there too, so maybe it's my fault too. So, I'm gonna go save that duck, try to let him free, and save him from being eaten, because everybody's got to be triggered because of the duck. So plans are, easy, go to the front gate, go around, the duck's here, untie duck, and leave. You can't go wrong with that. So, Let's get to business. So 
I'm back at the abandoned place. You guys, you guys are pissed off. You guys were pissed off before, so now I'm gonna go back to free the duck. All right. So, I've come back to the place and now the ducks are gone. But I talked to the owner and he told me, I talked to the owner and he told me that he lets them go free and roam around. It's not like it's anybody's, it's not like he's just capturing the duck and just letting it just sit there. Those are his ducks. So you can't take them. I can't cut the rope free. It belongs to somebody. It might be abandoned, an abandoned place, but I guess it's the watch taker's duck. So I can't let the duck free, all right? So remember how everybody's pissed off about the ducks? <laughs> he actually, he lets them ro roam free. Those are the ducks. There's actually more than one duck, I guess. Same ducks that we saw in our video. Same exact thing. Jesus Christ, I can't believe it. So I'm leaving now. So basically, the ducks belong to him. They're his pets. He just ties them up so they don't run around like crazy. He does feed them. He does treat them right. Um, it might be his food for later, but as for now, it's not going to be anybody's food. 